This doctor also said we have been up uh, to 125% capacity in maternity units and have delayed inducing women uh, because they're from their own community because there are so many illegal immigrants who are having babies that are, are, right. are flooding this hospital. And I think that really says it all because you can say that you want open borders because you feel bad for the illegal immigrants who are coming into the country. Of course, everybody feels bad for them, but there are drawbacks to that, and it comes in the form of American people who are living along the southern border, taxpayers who aren't getting the services that they that they deserve to yeah, get. Yeah, health care is not free, uh, and let's bring in that debate. So let's bring in House Minority Whip uh, Steve Scalise. Uh, great to see you, uh, Congressman. Uh, this is the, the ongoing debate. Uh, on the border, it's almost mind-numbingly tedious to keep going over this. So what is it going to take to get some legitimate action at the border? Look, this is something that President Biden created. We've been talking about this, and y'all have as well, uh, for over a year now. This has gotten worse and worse. It's not gotten better. Uh, the administration completely ignores it. They are misleading the public, saying the border's secure. Everybody knows it's not, and it's communities all across the border that are getting ravaged, but now it's communities all across America. And again, you've covered the fentanyl deaths, which is another side of the open border story where you've got over 100,000 young people die last year. And President Biden doesn't care about that because he knows the solution is closing the border and he doesn't want to. This is going to be a huge fight in the new Republican Congress, but this is something that could be and should be addressed in the government funding bill, and it's not. In fact, uh, this omnibus that's coming up today actually makes it harder to secure our border. Uh, no, no new funding for our border patrol agents, but they actually give money to foreign countries to secure their border in, in other parts of the world. This is insanity. Uh, how do you think that House vote is going to play out today, Congressman? Well, you know, we've whipped against it. We're reducing that number, but, you know, if you look at the last CR uh, just a few weeks ago, a uh, similar kind of number. But again, this bill is not addressing the real problems of the country. It's making them worse. They're increasing spending in parts of the budget. They need to be decreasing. Uh, we've seen massive mm. trillions of dollars of increased spending in Washington that have driven inflation. The inflation is what is crushing hardworking families right now during Christmas. That's what we should be trying to turn around, not make worse with increased spending which this bill does. But do you think that when all is said and done, it's going to pass the House today? It is expected to come up this morning, and we, you know, we've been told somewhere around 11 o'clock noon. But uh, you know, again, it's only going to make matters worse mm. uh, for people that are struggling with high costs of everything. When you go to the grocery store, the gas station, this is going to make it worse for families. Yeah, you got record inflation. You throw more logs on the fire here with 1.7 trillion dollars in spending. That being said, Congressman, 18 Republican senators voted yes to this 1.7 trillion dollar spending bill. Um, we've heard from you this morning on what you say and the message as you as you whip your vote. Um, I'm curious if you've spoken to any of your colleagues over in the Senate. What do they say to you? You know, that there's a lot of talk about, well, you know, this is the best deal they could get. And what I say is help is on the way. And in literally two weeks, there will be a Republican House and the debate is going to be a lot different. The starting point for bills will be so much different in terms of what we'll be sending over. We're actually going to pass a border security package. We're going to pass an energy security package. We're going to be passing bills to confront the problems the country is facing instead of what you've seen from Speaker Pelosi and the far left. Uh, which is making matters worse. So this isn't the time to be cutting long-term deals. Hold on for a few more weeks and help is on the way. Uh, unfortunately, that's not been received and that's been a big right. frustration. So Congressman, uh, how, how big is your majority going to be? How many seats? We'll be at 222. So obviously a narrow majority, but a right. majority nonetheless. So and that's what six we're preparing seats? for. So five seats. Five seats. So five seats, you have an advantage. There's a school of thought out there. The Republicans were nervous that there's some people that don't want to fund Ukraine. And if it went to the House, Republicans weren't going to fund it, and they'll have to ask Democrats for votes. And, of course, that would come with a price. What do you think about that? Well, look, there's been a lot of talk about additional scrutiny on money that's being spent everywhere, not just in Ukraine, uh, but in every government agency. I mean, there's trillions of dollars that have gone out the door a lot of this money that's gone out under COVID relief, for example, tens of billions of dollars, we already know that's right. fraudulent. Payments going to people that are here illegally. Payments going to people in other countries. 
uh, we're going to be investigating that. Why don't we actually be stewards for the taxpayer money right. instead of every time that somebody sees a problem, just stole trillions of dollars of money right. out that's borrowed. And I know you're not going to have a shot of the budget now until September after this vote gets passed. But, Congressman, it, it looks like uh, Kevin McCarthy is stuck. He does not have the votes. Matt Gaetz wrote a column the other day, says, I'm never voting for him. He stands for nothing. Have you been approached about being the next speaker if McCarthy can't get it done? And what do you say to those people that don't want to vote for him, who are in your party? Yeah, no, look, I support Kevin. And I think there's still a lot of conversations that are going on. And Kevin's working to get there. He's going to get there. Uh, and that's just been an ongoing conversation this week. We've had a number of additional meetings with leadership and rank and file members going through rules changes. You know, what, what you hear the most is people are so frustrated with the way the House has been run, and we're going to be changing that. There are a lot of changes coming. And, you know, this is today is, is the big frustration because it really takes some of that leverage away from us when we get into the new majority. But, you know, we're going to continue moving forward. Uh, we've got work to do, and it's going to be a busy next year. I think you're going to be excited Who, to see Who's the changed their vote? Andy pass. Buggs, Andy, uh, Andy Biggs, you have uh, Congressman Good, you have Matt Gates. Uh, is anyone showing signs of budging, uh, of, of moving off? Because as you know more better than anybody else, nothing can get done. You can't format chairmanship. You can't set up an agenda without a speaker. Right. We've got to first elect the speaker and then get to work. And so Kevin's meeting with all of those members. Uh, that you mentioned. We're meeting with a lot of them as a leadership team to go through rules changes, and then Kevin's meeting with them individually as well. So, you know, there's there's still time to go, and that work continues on. Congressman Scalise, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Merry Christmas. Great to be with you. Merry Christmas. Absolutely. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.